Good morning. Welcome to our daily devotion. It is Monday, May 3rd. Um, I would like to start out, Liz, if you're, if you're going to be watching this video, I want to thank you for the great job you did on your mom's memorial service yesterday. It was a great, great service, one of the best I've been to. Uh, great time, got to meet a lot of your family. Good morning, Serena. Got to meet a lot of your family, got to meet your 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 daughter. Oh my gosh, has she ever grown up? I don't know if you, how many of you remember Kayla. Well, she her, she goes now by the name of Victoria, but uh, but Kayla, Victoria, was there. She's a sophomore in college now, uh, going to be a fire investigator. Just a beautiful, beautiful girl. A beautiful, you have a beautiful daughter, uh, Liz. But anyway, uh, you guys did a great job. It was a lot of fun. Morning, Marcy. Good morning, Will. Uh, boy, God knows what he's doing. Does he ever know what he's doing? <laughs> I thought maybe this video stuff was going to be the future, and that's what I'd be doing. And and here we are now, and two weeks getting ready to, to start back up again, uh, to start church uh, again in a new location, a new time, a uh, new facility. Uh, and I can see why God is doing this because the, uh, the, the, these devotions, these videos, not the devotions, the videos of, of Sundays have just steadily gone down. People, people are looking for more than just a video message. So God has opened the door for us and we will be meeting soon and we're excited. I hope you are too. Word Matthew chapter 18. I'm going to be reading a, a story that Jesus tells the uh, <coughs> tells the uh, disciples because uh, one of the disciples came and asked Jesus how many times he'd have to forgive his brother when he sinned against him and so this Jesus uses a story that I'm going to be reading here to to is a parable uh, really talking about God forgiving us and if God forgives us, then we also need to forgive others in the same way that God forgives us, because God's going to forgive us in the same way we do. So anyway, let me read the story here. It says, then, Jesus, then Peter came to Jesus and asked, Lord, how many times shall I forgive my brother when he sins against me? Up to seven times? Jesus answered, I tell you, not seven times, but 77 times. Now, before I go on, this this whole number, Peter's saying seven times, and at the, seven in the, in the Bible is a complete number. It's like completion. But Jesus goes on to say, no, no, 77 times. In other words, just infinity, not just completion, infinity, like every time. It says, therefore, the kingdom of heaven is like, this is what God is like, a king who wanted to settle accounts with his servants. As he began the settlement, a man who owed him 10,000 talents was brought to him. Since he was not able to pay, the master ordered that he and his wife and his children and all that he had be sold to repay the debt. The servant fell on his knees before him. Be patient with me, he begged, and I will pay back everything. The servant's master took pity on him, canceled the debt, and let him go. So here, here he is now with incredible debt. Uh, ask him for mercy. Not only does he give him mercy, but that's but this person gives takes away his entire debt. Doesn't doesn't owe him anything anymore. Morning, good morning, Alicia, Alicia. But when the servant went out, he found one of his fellow servants who owed him a hundred denarii. He grabbed him and began to choke him. Pay back what you owe me, he demanded. The fellow servant fell to his knees and begged him, "Be patient with me, and I will pay you back." But he refused. Instead, he went off and had the man thrown into prison until he could pay the debt. When the other servants saw what had happened, they were greatly distressed and went and told their master everything that had happened. When the master called the servant in, you wicked servant, he said, I canceled all the debt of yours because you begged me to. Shouldn't you have had mercy on your fellow servant just as I had on you? And anger, his master turned him over to the jailers to be tortured until he should pay back all he owed. This is how my heavenly Father will treat each of you unless you forgive your brother from your heart. Wow. So this is immediately after Jesus. This is right after 
Jesus tells his disciples how to settle a dispute. Remember, he says, "Go to your brother with, and if if he listens to you, great. Otherwise, and, and the, the essence of the story Friday in our Saturday night devotion was that that we don't just let things go linger on. That if it's a dispute with someone, we we settle it. We settle it. Uh, we don't just let it fester in our in us and cause cause resentment. We 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 settle matters as Christians. Now here's Jesus telling them that they need to forgive a fellow Christian when they no notice now it says a brother. So this, this is talking about a fellow Christian uh, because God wants us to be a light to the world. We can't be a light if we're arguing and disputing with one another and, and refusing to talk to one another, refusing to be in the presence of one another, refusing to forgive one another. Hard to be a light then to the world. So if we're going to be a light, then, then Jesus is saying that you need to forgive others the same way that God forgave you. So think of it. God, God forgave you for every sin that you've ever committed. When you gave your life to Jesus, it said he wiped your, your slate clean. He, he totally wiped it clean. I've used this analogy before. Maybe this will help you just understand a little bit. It'd be like if you did a serious crime... Let's just say you you, uh, you 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 got drunk and you're driving home and you hit a young child on a bike and killed him. And now here you are in front of the judge who just happens to be the father of that child. And the judge asks you if you're guilty. And you say, yes, I'm guilty. I had too much to drink. I shouldn't have been driving. And I hit your son and I killed him. And yes, I'm guilty. And the judge says, all right, for your, your penalty is a death sentence. You, 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 you are going to be put to death. And you say, rightfully so, I'm, I'm guilty. And the judge says, but I'm going to take the punishment for you. I'm going to I'm going to let you go. I'm going to forgive you. I'm going to let you go and I am going to take the punishment and I'm going to be put to death in your place. That that's literally what God did for us. He he took the place of our sin. He he suffered and died on the cross in our place and gave us total total forgiveness. When you when you gave your life to Jesus he wiped away every sin. Now, now listen to this. I've shared this before. Not just every sin you committed before you became a Christian. He's already f died and forgiven you for every sin that you still are committing. And for every sin that you still will commit. It says that when God looks at you as a Christian, he sees you white as snow. Why? Because he sees Jesus standing in front of you. Forget taken the place of your sin. That is what this story is all about. And so what Jesus is saying is if God forgave you like that, then why would you not forgive a fellow Christian when they did something against you? He says when they sin against you, when they gossip about you, when they accuse you wrongly of something, You've all had those things happen. I've had them happen in my life. You can, you can, you can it's, have resentment. You can seek revenge. You can put that person out of your life. But that's not what Jesus is telling us to do as Christians. Jesus is telling us in the story prior to this on Saturday, first go and reconcile yourself to that person. And then this one, forgive that person. Forgive them. Now, here's the hardest thing to do. To forgive a brother or a sister that, that didn't sin against you, or that, that did sin against you, but doesn't realize that they sinned against you. They don't even see it. They don't even see it. They, they, don't, they don't even realize that they did you wrong. And yet you still forgive them. That That's... That's real Christianity. That's real Christianity. I, it's it, to me, it's sad when, when fellow Christians in a, in a family and in a, in a, in, in families don't even get along with one another. It's sad when I see fellow Christians in a church that don't get along with one another. 
it, that's not what we're supposed to be about. We're, we're supposed to be forgiving just like God forgave us. Let me read this again, verse 35. This is how your heavenly Father will treat each of you unless you forgive your brother or sister from your heart. It says, from your heart. It can't just be words. It has to be a total forgiveness. A total forgiveness that says, then, that, <coughs> then that's how your heavenly Father will forgive you. But if you refuse to forgive, then don't expect your Father to forgive you. Those are tough words. Good morning, Lynette. Those, those are strong words. But, but, this is, but this is what we're required to do. It, it's what, it's what, Jesus, what Jesus asks of us. Now, of course, Jesus uses everything to extremes uh, to make a point. So when, when Peter says seven times, it's like, boy, you know, that's a complete number. It's like, imagine forgiving, forgiving the same brother or sister that, that sinned against you, forgiving them seven different times. Th that in itself would be unbelievably difficult. But for Jesus now to go further and say that, no, no, 77 times. Imagine forgiving them every single time. But when you can learn to do that, when you can learn to do that, that's when you will have peace. That's when you'll have peace. When you refuse to forgive and you hold on to bitterness and you hold on to anger and you hold on to resentment and you look for revenge, then you have no peace. You have no peace. So Jesus didn't tell us it's just, just to make life hard for us. Jesus told us to do this because Jesus knew that, that that's what would give us peace when we can forgive from our heart. So how many of you watching now and watching this video later on have someone in your life that has hurt you, that has done you wrong, fellow Christian, that has done you wrong? Can you forgive them from your heart? It doesn't mean you have to forget it. Just forgive it. Just forgive forgive them. I, I do this. I have to do that. There's times when I have to do that. But as long as I keep doing it, I have peace then. I have total peace. If I have refused to, that peace goes away. That peace goes away. So God has given you the, the, the fruit of the Spirit, which is peace. So use that fruit to forgive a fellow brother or sister that does you wrong. I hope you heard God this morning. I hope you heard God, especially for those of you that have something against somebody. Let it go. Forgive from your heart. Amen? Hey, thanks for watching this tonight. Uh, I'm not sure I'm going to have a special message tonight because there's a lot going on today. Uh, we're going to put the shed together for, uh, for our new church. Uh, I'll have to wait and see how much time that we have. It's, things are getting busy now as the next two. But I will be here tomorrow morning for our daily devotion tomorrow. If this meant something to you, share it so other Christians can hear this. Uh, God bless you. Have a great day. And we are getting close to meeting. Remember, May 16th. I'll be sending out uh, letters to every one of you via uh, Facebook messaging or texting you. So look for it. It will be coming in the days ahead. God bless you all. Have a great day.